Hey everybody, Roy Nassari again. Want to share with you another case, interesting one, a root canal on a baby tooth. This patient was in her early 30s. These teeth kept hanging on, so she wanted to keep this lower molar that was recently restored with a composite because of recurrent decay, and she developed symptoms, uh, radiographs, and a lot of discussion with the general dentist um, led us to going for a root canal and trying to keep it. You could see occlusally there's some wear facets there's some clenching grinding and I use uh, the microscope and rubber dam to plan out my access the reference points are the cusps and the line angles at the gum line those are kind of my um, external boundaries in my head as I go into the access three-dimensionally uh, as you've seen other videos I start with an 850 or 858 diamond and kind of rough out uh, that trapezoidal access that um, is you know, indicated for molars. And I'm really searching for the pulp horns. You can see here I'm carefully uh, prepping. This tooth, this pulp chamber was calcified, so I'm not gonna get that drop-in effect that we like to get, but carefully troughing, looking for color change, keeping, keeping um, you know, all my landmarks intact, keeping my boundaries, respecting the boundaries, and I'm in there prepping and kind of looking for that pink dot. And again, this is a primary tooth. This is a lower molar, baby molar, tooth K. They're smaller, their anatomy is different, the roots are divergent, the pulp chambers are a little different, but when we want to keep them, and the patient wants to keep them, this is, this is our only thing to do. As we continue to prep here, you'll see, you'll notice the pulp chamber is shorter. There were pulp stones in this, so I had to be very careful not to perforate, and that's the key to treating these teeth, knowing the differences in anatomy. Everything's a little smaller. And the explorer showed that little pink dot. On In this case, it was the mesolingual. And then I went with a smaller diamond to unroof enough of the chamber to locate the canals. There are different types of access preparations now. There's dual entry, there's um, you know there's an idea of keeping those pulp horn uh, pulp horns intact for retention of buildups but uh, no matter how you how you slice it the unroofing has to be done at some point some percentage of it to locate all the canal anatomy and clean everything out. Generally, primary molars are like adult molars. They have three to four canals, sometimes five, depending on the tooth position. And in this case, I assumed there's four canals, but I always look for that middle mesial. There's bleeding, so there's this tooth was vital. The dentin is thinner on lower, on the primary teeth, so we have to be very careful in our preparation. I use full strength hypochlorite to do the disinfection, the the rinsing, and the removing of the tissue. And I'll do zooming in here in high mag to show what that pulp chamber floor looks like this little really tightly adhered pulp stone. There's some bleeding around from the orifices. And then we do working like determination. We're careful doing patency filing on primary teeth, especially if there's a tooth bud below it. Um, it's really not recommended to do so, but in this case, there's no permanent tooth bud uh, sitting below it, so we clean and shaped and use apex locator to make working length determination. And I did confirm radiographically because the stoppers are not very stable on these short teeth um, on the file, on the flute parts of the file, so we have to kind of be very careful in confirming the lengths. During cleaning and shaping, you see this champagne effect with hypochlorite reacting with tissue and debris. I love seeing those little bubbles. And the bleeding is completely stopped. Uh, we did a very light flaring, very little. We don't really want to flare these teeth out at all because the dentin is really thin. It's 
especially in the furcal parts, towards the furcal walls of the canals. You can see a very small access opening. Nice, cl clean, smooth walls. A lot of rinsing, EDTA. And here, obviously, as I, as I do, heat treated rotary instruments, pre curved, so the patients don't have to open so wide. Uh, we don't need them to stretch open so wide. We just pre curve these little rotary instruments. Our, I'll spare you all the shaping protocol. Maybe another video I'll go through that, but essentially keeping it at a very uh, an 04 preparation so it's not too tapered at all. That's the idea, is to keep less taper and conservative shaping. Just take what the tooth gives you. At the end we do some ultrasonic agitation with a 15k file on medium to low setting and ultrasonic. And that's really just to agitate the EDTA get that smear layer really clean, clean all the debris generated by the instrumentation and cleaning of the canals. Spend about a minute doing that. And you can see when we dry the canals we also keep keep looking, keep inspecting, dry the canals under the microscope to look for uh, canal anastomoses or other connections between the canals. There may be little fins connecting them hinting at mid-mesials or other canals, so even drying with paper points is something that a microscope is, is, is important to use. And obturation varies depending on where we're trained and our experience, but this tooth was obturated, one vertical, backfilled, and I essentially have just one or two pluggers, not much more. It's not this part is not rocket science. It's we really just carefully fill the canals. You can see post ops showing very, you know, lightly flared. And then there's a buildup. Luxacore was used as a buildup. Uh, there were three canals in this case. Thank you, and leave me your comments.